Welcome back to Fashion Voices, the show that brings together the hearts and minds of the industry's greats for an unfiltered discussion on a new topic each week. The biggest body positive moments were, you know, the moment after top surgery that I was first able to see my chest. That's a moment I'm never going to forget. The kind of icons that we have at the moment, they are still very much palatable bodies in terms of like, you know, the curvaceous in the right places. This week, we are discussing body positivity with two brilliant guests. Joining us from New York, we have the artist, actor and model Chella Mann, a valued voice with New York's LGBTQI plus community. Chella made history as the first trans masculine actor cast in a DC superhero series. Our second guest on the panel is the creative director, stylist and editor in chief of Wonderland magazine, Tony Blaze Ibekwe. Alongside her work styling the likes of Georgia Smith, Nicki Minaj and Mary J Blige. Tony is on the diversity committee at the British Fashion Council and is in the process of creating a platform for mentorship within fashion. Guys, hello. Hi, thank you for having us. Hey, thank you for having me. Let's just dive straight in with the first question. What does body positivity mean to you? Tony. Not comparing yourself to the standards that society sets for you and just raising the bar for yourself by accepting yourself. Do you know what I mean? I feel like there's so many pressures to look a certain way, to dress a certain way sometimes. It's about just kind of owning what you have. We may have our insecurities, but it's like, how do you flip that on your head and kind of turn it into something really positive? And I think that's, mm. what, it means. that's what it means to me. And Chella, what does body positivity mean to you? I mean, I agree with Tony. I think that for me, it's realizing the default is actually body negativity and really mm. figuring out how do we rewire that? You know, every day when we look in the mirror, oftentimes for most people, negativity is what is predominantly taking over our thoughts. And that's terrible. So I think for me, it's watching those thoughts and like rewiring them, you know, and over time, it kind of just becomes your reality as you practice that. And so it's to me, body positivity is a practice. It's a rolling experience rather than a, than a moment. Yes, yeah. It's just so true. We're so hard on ourselves. You're never in the mirror being like, God, I look so good today. Or, you know, what am I thankful for? You're always kind of looking for that thing. And I think that's mm. what it is. It's like, how do we move away from being so nasty to ourselves? And it mm. is about what you're feeding yourself. It's about what you're allowing yourself to kind of accept as the norm. How have you seen the body positivity movement develop? I feel like we are moving in a good space, but I feel like there's much more to be done. I think there's still a long way to go in terms of like what inclusion is. I think people get have this miscommunication that inclusion is, you know, having this quota in your cast and in fashion week being like, oh, we've got, you know, our person of colour. We have the person that's maybe over a size 14. Oh, great. Oh, my God, we're so inclusive, aren't we? <laughs> we're mm. still kind of in that space where it's like we're ticking boxes. We need to go to that next level where it's like, it's not your palatable inclusion, it's the inclusion that is your everyday person. And how about you, Chella? It's definitely progressing and getting better. I think we owe so much to technology because we can just go on any social media platform and post a selfie and just be like, here I am, I'm my own representation, this is what I look like. We no longer have to wait for like magazines to put our faces on the cover, like billboards to have us on it. We just post a selfie or anything and other people from our community are supporting us and uplifting us. No one's deciding whose story is told, everyone's deciding to tell their own story. Exactly. What types of garments make you feel positive about your body? Well, honestly, that's changed. Being a trans individual, I struggled a lot with clothing and the gender stereotypes that were connected to it. Growing up, you know, the things that made me feel good were everything that was not stereotypically feminine because I knew the characteristics that were associated with femininity and I knew I didn't want to express myself that way. So I went towards the clothes that I knew the opposite of that. And of course, that was just like kind of not really the most fashionable, like baggy cargo shorts and like some t-shirts with, with like lizards on them. So at the time that was, you know, my go-to. But then, you know, having top surgery, I'm drawn to, sh to clothes that show my body because I'm so proud of my body now. And um, being able to like watch my shirt fall flat is something I never ever thought that I would have. Or even like the ability to show 
off my scars, which is such a privilege to do and like still feel safe, you know? Tony, tell me, what garments make you feel positive about your body? I think more and more now I've become an exception of like the way my body is and the way how I am as a woman. I used to have a lot of insecurities when it came to having like a smaller chest, smaller bust area. And I never used to want to wear like things that were like low cut. Crazy enough, when I got into fashion and you know, obviously most models have a kind of smaller bust, I kind of was like, oh my God, like, maybe it's just quite model of me, like having this kind of like, you know, I kind of found the positive, you know, mm. element in my insecurity. So yeah, I had a weird relationship in the beginning with that. And then now I'm just kind of like, bring me all the V-neck. Give me the V-neck. <laughs> give me the V-neck. Give me give the, the all deep V. <laughs> all the way. All the way, honey, all the way. And within fashion, how have you seen the industry embracing the movement? I feel like New York Fashion Week has always been a pretty good in terms of casting when it comes to body positivity. When you've had people like Gypsy Sport, Telfar, you have people like Chroma who have always kind of casted plus size, I hate that word, but just kind of more your more standard size of model. Now, I think you can see, I'm not sure if it's a trend, but you see a lot of bigger fashion houses. You have your Fendi's, you have your Versace's now, who are kind of moving towards this direction, which I was super, super shocked to see. Chella. Have you seen changes in the fashion industry in terms of embracing body positivity? Absolutely. I wouldn't be sitting here if there weren't changes, you know? And I've seen friends such as uh, Aaron Phillip. She is a close friend of mine. I definitely think everyone should check her out. I want to see her on every runway around the world. I have another friend, Alok, who is also a model, but, you know, is very, I dislike this word, but unconventional in the way that they don't conform, you know? And I think that's so beautiful. And I think that should be conventional because what would the world look like if everyone chose to actually be who they are and not conform? Mm. What if that was conventional? Are there any designers that you think are pushing things forward in terms of body positivity? I mean, you've had like great moments like Kristen Seriano a couple of seasons ago, which definitely was very inclusive in terms of like, body positivity but I think we're so quick to talk about body positivity or in general just think about shape size but inclusion goes beyond that we actually do have a long way to go there's a few I can think of um mm -hmm. Chromat which you actually mentioned before yeah. they've been incredible I've shot with them before and I genuinely feel comfortable you know and they definitely hire queer people and disabled people in front of and behind the camera in addition to that private policy is actually it's a small high fashion Asian owned brand that I just worked with and they have been incredible about producing this jewelry that I wanted to do. Um, I basically designed this earpiece that would work if you had a cochlear implant or a hearing mm -hmm. aid, and it wouldn't conceal that. On the contrary, it uplift that. And that's something I've always wanted to do. And they have been incredibly supportive. And in addition, yeah, there's there's just been other brands that I have been honored to work with, like Calvin Klein, for example. I've shot with them in underwear and like as a trans individual, to be in underwear, it's a very vulnerable experience. And especially because like the masculine underwear isn't made for someone like me. I just really appreciate them giving me the space to be myself. So on a personal level, have there been any standout moments relating to body positivity? I shot a model for one of the covers of Wonderland. Um, their name is Kai Isaiah. They were just like everything. Like Kai is obviously gender non-conforming and just living in their truth really and I think it just I just kind of felt really inspired by it because I was just like there's so many little things that you kind of all these like pressures you put on yourself and then when you see someone just living in their moment and living in their truth you're like why do you place so much pressure on yourself you know but yeah I think that's a special moment for me because it was a shoot that I had styled and then just seeing that the LV show doing spoken well I was like this is just so yeah yeah Chella have there been any standout moments of personal significance I mean for myself I think the biggest body positive moments were you know the moment after top surgery that I was first able to see my chest that's a moment I'm never going to forget the moment that I was first able to articulate that I was genderqueer non-binary and accept that you know with pride and not feel mm. shame the day I like, gave myself my first testosterone shot with the help of my mom, who's a doctor. In terms of like in, in the world, like I said, seeing my friend Aaron, you know, go down a runway in a wheelchair looking so sexy. Like, mm. damn, that's what we need more of.
So both of you sent pictures of yourselves in a moment of feeling positive about your body in some way. Let's have a look at them. Tony, tell us about your picture. It was just a picture that was taken recently by my mum during lockdown. I'm wearing like one of her designs, the jumpsuit. It's like super fitted, it's super V. I know I talked mm -hmm. about this whole V neck moment that I'm going through. It's from my mum's um, brand called the Directature. So like I just have a really special connection to it and it's the way it fits my body. And I just felt really good that day. And like everyone in London was like running out to enjoy the snow as you do. I feel like this was a really good feeling. I missed this whole lockdown and all these things that are going up around at the moment. Mom photos are the best. The best. When they're not blurry. Oh yeah. Um, Chella, tell us about your picture. Yes. So my photo, it's actually shot for this magazine called Perfect Magazine. The photographer was someone that I knew. Their name is Hunter Abrams. And it was honestly the first time I put on a dress in a while because there's a lot of trauma around feminine clothes and my body. But I'm proud to say I think I'm finally getting to a place where I'm able to wear them on my own terms. And that changes everything. For the first time, like I put on this white dress, which was beautiful, by the way, like the straps are sculpted people. I felt beautiful. And I felt in touch with what I guess could be described as femininity, but also just like sensitivity and softness and gentleness that's a very special photo for me because it really captured a moment that i was reclaiming dresses for myself it's a great picture it's the final question sadly in terms of what we've been talking about today with body positivity and fashion what changes would you like to see in the future on a very base value level we can see inclusion and fashion shows you can see inclusion in campaigns and stuff like that but in terms of like a more internal level we're still seeing brands send us you know basically size zero clothes and expect us to put it on your everyday person whether they're an artist or even just like your model who is like super small some, most of the time i've been on sets where i've had models really upset when they can't fit into clothing and i think we need to kind of look into how there's this kind of idea of body positivity trickle down to our internal kind of procedures so yeah for me that's more so kind of more like a technical no i think it's really important i was speaking to a plus size model literally yesterday and she was saying that often on shoots they will just give her a coat and everyone else will have like normal clothes and she'll just have to put a coat on which is not fun that's not how it works and how about you chella what do you think the future of fashion should be? I think it begins with the distribution of power, um, centering the idea of collective liberation. You know, you lift up the people who are most affected by systemic oppression and listen to them, basically, and what they have to say, because there's not one person who can individually speak for every single group that is affected. You know, I think we need to up with them and find them and just like ask them, what can we do? How can we help? What, what do you need to be supported? And in that way, we'll have a snowball effect. And instead of having to ever trickle down, they're going to be at the top to begin with. That's a great note to leave it on. Guys, we've run out of time. Thank you so much to both of you for joining me today. Thank you for having us. See you later. Thank you. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more fashion voices from Farfetch.